Hello everyone and welcome to our Tech Training Thursdays. Today we're joined by our amazing Veronica Hernandez, our CIT at Arno Elementary. She's going to be going over understanding DMAC for the classroom with teachers. Veronica, take it away. Hi, hello. Um, I'm Veronica Hernandez. I've been teaching for 21 years and I've been a CIT for the past, I believe, five years here at Arnold Elementary. And so we received a training actually from DMAC as a request from our principal. So she wanted um, us to become more familiar with it because she comes from the high school. And now she's in elementary and it's her first year, no, her second year with us, I think, being principal, yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and, um, are you showing my slides or am I showing my slides? Oh, I was gonna let you share your screen. Okay, okay, good, okay. So, share. Okay, so we're going to start with DMAC one click. Then I'm going to go into the waffle, the student portfolio, and making groups, and then into data export. So we'll talk about the DMAC one click first. And so in order to access it, you have to go to step one, of course, is obviously log in to DMAC. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log into DMAC. And um, your credentials, you can get them from your assistant principal or if you've been teaching for as long as I have, then you already have them memorized. <clears throat> and so in order to access the one click, we would go here to Teak Scores, and you open that up, and one click is here on the upper right-hand corner. And so what this does is it allows you to access specific um, reports, like your item analysis was a suggested from the actual DMAC, the results by demographic, the reporting category, the reported category performance by student, um, by tutorial, by SE performance, SE tutorial, and uh, your student quintiles. And so you would just hit save. And then when you go to run a report, it's going to automatically run all those reports for you instead of having to go uh, report by report by report. And then you have all of the reports there at your fingertips that you can look at. And this was my benchmark that I do with my students. And so it's just really neat having everything together all in one, and then you can just go through the different reports. It shows you your questions, how many percentage got it right, and then it gives you your quintile score so you can see where your classroom is at. It also, um, it'll give you your demographics so we can see most of us have Hispanic students, and, um, and so it gives you all that information, which is usually what is required of us. And if you have a GT student, I like this one because it gives you your your special pops. So it gives you by female, by male, by um, um, if you have LEP students, special education students, Title ones. So it lets you know where where your kids are at by by their their coding from their PEMS, and then you have your SE performance. So it'll tell you what the TIC was being tested, what was expected of of your students to be able to do. And so when you're going over data, you don't have to be going into every single website and looking up your TEAK and, oh, what was the TEAK? You already have it at your hands and then you can start planning and organizing on how, if you have tutoring groups, like for the upper grades, how you're gonna tackle that next, um, the, the, the TEAK the next time in when you're teaching it or when you're doing your tutoring groups. And so <clears throat> this is what, um, the one click does for you. So it's all, it's just, I think it's just really neat that it gives everything to you. And um, it's just very detailed in the different reports. So I don't know if there's any questions, but um, yeah, I didn't know that all these reports existed. So when I was sitting through the DMAC training, I was like, when I was in the testing grades, this would have been really beneficial because it's it's all at your fingertips. So. I have in my slide, I've listed the step one, the step two, the step three, the step four, and I've also included the recommended reports that the DMAC um, trainer told us to utilize, and I've included pictures as well 
so that if you have any questions, you can refer back to the PowerPoint. And I believe I could also share it if need be. <clears throat> so then in step, uh, our second thing I'm going to talk about is the waffles and the student portfolio and making groups. And so the waffle, if I go back into my DMAC, um, the waffle is going to be on the upper left hand corner and it's going to be a, a yellow square. So let me go back and do that. <clears throat> oh, it kicked me out. Okay, no. So I go into my waffle and I'm going to go to um, student portfolios. And in student portfolios, now I can group my students, which I thought was pretty neat. I could also um, look up my students by demographic as well. And I didn't know that you could do all these things. So you could look up like your GT kids, you could look up your special education kids, you could look up um, just depending on how they're coded in PEMS. And I thought that was pretty neat. But what I found most interesting is that I can actually create groups. So I have a group right now that goes to reading tutoring, and they just started this week. So all I would do, it would be just to highlight their names. So my my David goes, my Victoria goes, my Troy. And so once I've highlighted my kids, I can go to create group. And so what this allows me to do is that I would name it, like, let's say it's my, um, they're in intervention. So the next time when I pull my test, I can, and I already have some groups. I have my GT group and I have my special pop group as well. So I can just pull up those kids the next time we give a reading benchmark or math benchmark and see how they're doing so I can have that data for my, my RTIs or for other referrals. So that way I can um, better serve the students and it just targets those groups. So I found that to be really interesting is making the groups and beneficial for like um, fifth grade teachers who team teach and they have different groupings or they may mix the kids around or just however it is that you group your kids when, when you're team teaching. And then it's easier to track the kids and to try to develop like learning plans for them to help them be more successful since we're now um, doing our, our, our race strategies as well. You can target just different, it's just so many different things that you can target. So, um, but of course it, it's, um, it's up to you how you would like to utilize it in your classroom. And then the next thing uh, I've also included in my PowerPoint pictures of everything and how you go ahead and you click on the student's name to create your groups. And um, when you go to run your reports, you can also run your reports by your groups, which I also like that as well. You can, you don't have to um, do it as a whole class. So you can give it to the person who's tutoring your students and they could also get different activities for the kids based on the TEKS on the, the past um, benchmark to help the students do better in for the next CBA. Because I think the upper grades test three before they take the actual start test. And last is our data export. And this was the one that I found the most interesting out of all of them. Again, you would go back and you would access your waffle and then you would go to data export. And I wasn't able to utilize this because I haven't tested STAR, but for teachers who are in third, fourth and fifth, you could take your STAR test from last year and then you could take your STAR test. Um, like if you're a fifth grade teacher, you would take your STAR test from fourth grade, your STAR test from third grade. And then when you run your report, it's really neat because it's going to list and tell you what what they got in third grade, what they got in fourth grade, if they got master's needs. Um, I'm not sure what the other labels are because I don't teach the upper grades, but it tells you by how much they either increased or decreased. And I just thought it was a really fascinating report. And I feel bad that I can't give that access to you because I, I don't, like I said, I'm in first grade and we don't really use DMAC in kinder. We just start using it in first grade. But second grade teachers will be able to access and you can compare like the beginning of the year math test from first grade to the beginning of the year math test from second grade, beginning of the year reading test 
from first to beginning of the year reading test in second and and it'll export it onto excel for you so um if you're doing like data walls you'll be able to have that um available to you and you don't have to wait for your um assistant principal to let you know like how the kids did in in third grade or how they did in fourth grade you'll have that information at your fingertips and so i found that to be really interesting and also you can go through it if you want to do just your, your special pops you can do your special pops you can do your sped your 504 you can do um just by um your grade level or kids at risk bilingual so i your gt kids i just think it's really neat i didn't know that all of this was available in dmac i just thought oh i just go in and, and key in my answers and you know but it it there's a lot more to it than than just that so that really concludes my my presentation unless anybody has any questions and in my uh powerpoint i also in my google sites it also has the steps on how to access very and nice. fill out the forms thank you so much that was a really informative training um i don't see any questions on on the, the chat at all, but uh, we have Stephanie Alfaro and Susana Barbosa in here as well. If you ladies have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. 